Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Priestess and Medium Roslyn. Thanks for coming back in to share some guided information and spirit talk. <laughs> it's called Guided Talks with Priestess Roslyn because truly it is guided by spirit. I want you to know that. Now, if any of you remember uh, about five weeks ago, I specifically asked you all to send me any questions that you had about life, about love, about whatever it was that you were wondering about that I felt would be a good topic and I would do like a once monthly uh, gathered reading for everyone to listen to. And you don't even have to actually visually watch it. You can just listen and uh, I will give you the information that I'm being guided on based on your questions, okay? So these are some questions that I felt were, they were really good questions and topics and I just wanted to be able to share those things with you all. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, I want to welcome in Spirits of Love, Light, and Truth. And thank you so much for being here, guides, ancestors of light and benevolent healing. And thank you all for listening, all of you beautiful guides, goddesses, and masculine. Okay, so this is one that I feel we can all relate to. It's I'm only going to use the first name, which is Lisa, okay? Uh, it's about her job. She says that she feels constantly underpaid, she's depressed, and she's been at this kind of level of pay, uh, this kind of energy at her job, feeling depressed for years. She doesn't really know whether to blame her boss or her coworkers, okay? But she, she feels underpaid and she really doesn't know what to do, okay? She also wonders if she is just being treated this way because from time to time she doesn't feel like she fits in. Okay, so this is what I'm really picking up here for you. Um, Spirit is very, very directly saying that this is a social problem. It's a social issue. Um, they're telling me, Lisa, that your boss is, uh, his energy is not very good energy. And that when you come into this environment with the boss, the supervisors, the coworkers, it drains you, it depresses you. And that's another aspect that's happening here. A lot of people don't understand that they are empathic. They're actually empaths and they can become so drained emotionally, physically, being in a demanding environment where you have to perform, Lisa, and then you don't have much energy, creativity, you don't have the excitement because you're trying to handle being drained and being, you know, taken down in your energy by your boss and these other people. And because this is what happens, because your boss and your supervisors feel this way about you, what they're doing is picking up on that energy and they're not paying you. They're not paying you what you're worth. They're not paying you what is good enough for you to keep up with in your life, to pay your bills, to have money left over. Those are all things that are part of our birthright. Uh, your birthright in creation or in God or in the divine creator, your birthright is actually, uh, Lisa, for you to be it's for you to be whole, financially prosperous, you know, have your needs met and still be able to enjoy yourself. So for you, um, I actually feel like very clearly you should be carrying a little, some people would call it a mojo bag. Some people would call it a grigri. Some people would call it a little um, like a medicine bag um, with a little oil in it, roots, herbs um, tied together. Um, it doesn't have to be tied, like tied off really, really tightly, but just carry this with you, even if it's a drawstring little pouch um, with something in it that makes you feel good. The smells make you feel good. The herbs and roots are really good for you. Something that's soothing, but energetic, you know, like orange, mint, um, or you could also put in here to amplify everything. You could put in a crystal. You could put in um, like a certain stone, like agate, green agate. You could put in a piece of pyrite and those things to help amplify you during the day, okay? And you could carry that with you very small. It doesn't even have to be something that anyone else would notice. 
Um, also, you need to take um, a nice bath every day. And this is something that it can work wonders for you. I mean, really, it can help your energy. It can boost everything because what you're doing is picking up on those negative energies at work. And I'm being told by spirit, yes, someone there is betraying you. They're really betraying you. And what you can do is just come home because you, you might need to keep this job at, the, at this time. You know, I empathize with that very much. So what you can do is come home and take a bath, put something in the bath that makes you feel good, that makes you feel happy, that uplifts you. You can put salts in there, um, some oils that you like, and just bathe with this and imagine that your chakra system and your aura is just being clear. And to keep saying that for a few minutes, you know, at a time while you're in the bath and imagining all of this is leaving you. Now, when you step out, you're going to feel much better. Just imagine that you left everything behind you, you know, in the tub as you step out. And uh, you can dry yourself off. You don't have to, like, not dry yourself off. But just keep that vibration that you're clear, you know, and you're cleansed every day. And every evening when you're going to bed, you know that you've been cleared of that. And to keep giving yourself positive affirmations, okay? But there is more depth to this because I feel like definitely that you will be accepted and you'll have more income at another position. That's really the way I'm feeling like this is not going to be something that will follow you unless you just, you're holding it in your thoughts and you're obsessing about it. But those baths and having those beautiful roots and herbs and oils around you is going to help you. I feel definitely that there is a position coming up for you um, I want to say April, and it's February right now. Actually, it's February 14th right now. Um, I feel like April, you're going to have to know um, whether you're going to stay at this job or leave this job because I feel like there is an opportunity and there's hope coming for you right at the beginning of April, okay? So I think that you should plan now and be prepared now. Get your references together. I feel like they're going to really screen you. But I feel like this is going to be a good, healthy position for you. And it's not going to be um, totally different from what you're doing now. It's going to be a step up and you're going to feel more comfortable and relaxed there. Okay. So I just want you to understand that and start, um, Lisa, just start allowing this to change your behavior just a little bit. Change your behavior. Amplify it. Look at things around you that make you feel more professional. Look at what clothes make you feel more vibrant, you know, the things you have in your closet. Treat yourself at least once a month, you know, even if you only have five or ten dollars, try and treat yourself at least once a month. These things are going to help get rid of that toxic energy and raise your vibration, okay? I feel like good things are going to come through for you in this next job, okay? So thanks for your question and thanks for remembering, uh, about uh, the request for the questions. Okay, Lisa, I'll talk to you later, okay, after you listen to this. Um, <clears throat> the next question uh, that I pulled from my email, I thought it was very interesting. Um, this is Kevin, I'm just using the first name. Um, he wants to know, how do I know for sure that I'm psychic? You know, because he says when he was a kid, when he was a kid, he used to have really vivid dreams, and he had um, what he thought were imaginary friends, and he was about eight years old when he started experiencing these things, and he would usually be outside when these imaginary friends, when, when they would encounter, you know, when he would have an encounter with them, and he says, um, Kevin says, what is blocking me? What is blocking me? How do I know I'm psychic, and what's blocking me? Um, he wants to know, it seems because he wants to buy a home, he wants to move along in his life and make some business decisions, which I don't blame him for that, right? It would be good to click in on what you need to see before you start investing your time and energy, right? So let's get down to this. How do you know that you are psychic? Well, we all do have some ability and sometimes what happens to us is when we're children, okay, we come into this world, into this existence, into our 
our life form, you know, our bodies in this earth, earth uh, life that we're living, right? We're born and we don't have those blocks and barriers. We don't have them and we don't judge ourselves either. You know, we don't judge it. It's like we're kids, we have imaginary friends or <clears throat> you may have um, a special friend that you, you grew up with and you tell each other, you know, secrets and you don't have all those barriers on the way you think, you know, and you use your imagination when you're together with your friends and you share things and you're open. Um, and your third eye is literally not blocked with all this stuff. You know, as we get older, we start eating different things. Um, we start having more sugars and glutens and, you know, a lot of dairy and things that start to build up in our body and in our energy system that would block our third eye. But sometimes what we're doing is really just blocking our intuition. It blocks your connection. Um, because spirits and guides, they literally do hang out sometimes right near your crown chakra, like about four feet above you, because uh, our chakra system goes all the way to 12. I don't know if you all knew that, but it goes all the way to 12. So what happens is around us, we're not really detecting everything because we've been conditioned when we start to get a little bit older that no, you can't have an imaginary friend. You know, you can't have an imaginary friend. This isn't the way normal people act. And then we start cutting off our imagination. We start to lose connection in our dreams. We stop talking to our imaginary friends. And then we keep going with these diets that might not be very good, which I previously said. So what happens is we need to bring things back into balance. So usually when we start to bring things back in balance, what happens is uh, Kevin, one of your spirit guides, they may start to communicate with you in dreams. Uh, you might start to have uh, a feeling like one of your ancestors is around you. That's a sign that you're starting to open up again. And it's usually going to start with clearing up your diet. Okay, this is always something that I tell people. Clearing up your diet, meditating for at least 10 to 15 minutes a day on opening your crown, and your third eye and holding a crystal to help you to amplify this. Also working with bathing rituals with salt to help clear your energy and to have that intention and that thought while you're bathing, okay? Also writing down things while you are very calm and relaxed and just seeing what you're starting to write and ask you for your guides and Archangel Michael to protect you while you are opening yourself more and more to being psychic or tuning into your intuitive abilities. Also a confirmation that may start coming through for you is that you may know that someone is about to call you. You might hear their name. You may know that you're going to get something in the mail. You might see it flash before you sometimes. Sometimes when you're relaxing, your brain will drop off into theta. And theta brainwave is what shamanic healers use. I use theta brainwave all the time. Uh, psychics use theta brainwave all the time. And it'll naturally start coming to you more. Sometimes you may drop off right before you are asleep when you're in bed. And you may see a whole uh, movie play. It may just play out before you like a movie, like literally, because some of the drum journeys that I have, some of the visions that I have when I'm doing readings for people, it literally comes to me just that way, like a movie playing out right before you. That is confirmation, okay? So these different signs will start to happen. But for some people, they actually do need to, Kevin, they need to make an emotional release. And I'm picking up on that with you a little bit too, like part of you is is actually trying to process what your parents might have told you that wasn't good about it or it may have been some some kids at school that were mean that you didn't feel you could really be who you are but i feel like you're a natural psychic and you're going to make your way back to this just fine you know even if you never call yourself a psychic you may just pick up on your intuition which is something we all are supposed to vibrate like that 
And that's a new concept for some people, but we literally are all supposed to vibrate with that knowing and the knowledge and the intuition, our sixth sense, some people call it. That's the way we all are supposed to be. That's the way we all were in ancient times and we've gotten away from it. We've been so toxic with different things in the past hundred years or so. But um, thank you for writing in with that, Kevin, and you know, asking that question and being brave about that because it's going to help so many of us that are listening. Okay, thank you. So um, the next question, and I think this is going to be the last one. This is a really good topic. Um, someone wrote in, okay, and they didn't really feel comfortable with me speaking their name, which is fine, okay, because especially because of what she's experiencing now. Um, she wants to know, are psychic attacks real? Am I being cursed? How do I know that I have been cursed? Are these psychic attacks real? How do I know that I have been cursed? Okay. Well, okay. This is one aspect of it. Yes, it's very real. It can be ex extremely real. And yes, there are actually people who intentionally curse people. They do it intentionally. And I purposely, you know, I, I don't want to do anything toxic, anything negative, anything, you know, that would hurt anyone else, cause suffering to anyone else. I know that there are some people who actually, you know, they do those things. And it can give other people in the spiritual realm a bad name because they're actually taking their time and energy to do that. But this is what I really want you to understand and anyone else who's listening who feels that they are being cursed you know, because I get that a lot. A lot of people think that, you know, someone's trying to break them up too. You know, them and their boyfriend or girlfriend, they think that they're trying to be broken up, broken apart and have these problems. And that is coming from an outside attack that someone has purposely cursed them, you know, put a, a bad spell on them. It does happen that way sometimes. That is a real actual thing. However, what you have to do is recognize your own baseline and know that when you're getting too far out and you're having paranoid thoughts, you know, that can be just as bad as something actually being on you, you know, or a curse being on you. So the first thing you want to do is bring it back in, you know, try and learn to meditate, relax, write down a few things that are really grounding and calming to you and try to be rational and stick to some of that, right? The next thing you want to do is try to, and you know, I'm not saying this about coming to me specifically, but try to have a reading with someone that you feel you can trust them, like they're trustworthy and you feel connected to them as if they could give you a good reading to understand if you are blocked, if your roads are blocked, if you're crossed up, you know, in your spiritual forces, your life force energy, if someone has cursed you, you need to know that, you know, and a, a reader that would be someone who could help you to understand if you're being blocked and cut off. Um, another thing too, you want to develop a relationship and an understanding with Archangel Michael because he cleanses and clears Okay, he cleanses and clears our energy. He cuts off negative cords and attachments, implants, which I don't know if any of you heard of that, but you know, these things they actually do occur in our energy and in our energy body. You may need to start working with someone, you know, over the next few weeks or few months that you feel is helping you to clear away anything damaging or toxic. Work with Archangel Michael. Ask him to start coming and clearing your energy. Ask for pure white light to come into your energy body. Ask for uh, discernment to know if this is anyone around you who is not actually cursing you with intention, but they're so negative and they're so kind of polluted in their energy that you might feel you're being attacked. That's very real. Okay, you also need to develop a bath ritual. You need to develop a ritual of going outside and putting your feet in the ground, even though it's hard right now because of winter. You can go to a tree, put your hands on it, ask to be grounded so you feel safe in your body and your energy. 
um, and you want to write out a prayer, you know, ask for a sacred prayer from your own energy, from your own mind to bless you, to bless every part of you and clear your energy. You want to understand writing out things that will be very amplified and help you. Talk to a saint. Talk to Saint Expedite. Talk to Saint Anthony. Talk to a higher ascendant master, a guide that you feel is benevolent, and write it out, you know, even if it's just a few sentences, and burn a candle, okay? Burn a candle with it so your intentions are being amplified and manifested into the universe, okay? You will usually know, too, if you have a dream that you are safe and protected, if you have a dream about one of your relatives that may have passed away a long time ago, coming back to make you feel secure and safe, you'll know and feel that this vibration is leaving. Also, I did a video about a week ago on uh, smudging your home and commanding all negative energy out. You may need to do that through your entire home, which is a good idea. And command out all negative energy as you're smudging with your sage. Okay, if you need something very strong, you can seek someone uh, to help you with that because there's different types of blends. Um, and you want to command all negative out away from your energy body and out of every room, out of your property. Okay, because it can get very in depth. I didn't want to make this extremely long, but those are some of the things you can start to do. Okay, some people will feel very secure by going to a priest you know, or a minister who they feel can clear this energy as well, okay? <clears throat> so I think that that's been, you know, a pretty good amount of information for us to listen to and understand. If you feel that you would like a personal private reading, you can get in touch with me. I left my information below. You can go to thegoddesstree.bigcartel.com. It's the goddess tree bigcartel.com and I hope you all uh, just enjoy the rest of your evening and enjoy the information okay I'll talk to you all soon bye bye